Hello, hello. This is snake game time. Uh, I'm not up to much. I'm getting the second dose of my vaccine in like 12 hours. So I'm going to try and play some snake game to get some sleep. And then I assume that you put your link. Yep. But I just need to explain. I think Kaz is going to drop in soon. I'm not sure. But this snake game, I played it as a kid and it has horrified me. Thanks for the link. I wish I could explain how this game horrifies me, but I shall just play it. So settings, nothing really interesting. And then we're going to start the game. Yeah, thanks for uh, plugging it. This is the most, I don't know how to explain the feeling behind this, but it is a depressing, not depressing, it is a, it is a background of a snake, a cute snake, and it's just in a dark place. And there's like evil eyes and stuff looking at it. Yeah, so this game is from, I think, 2000 something. You can tell because in the corner it says unregistered. Um, back before games were just like download from Steam or whatever, you'd have to buy a serial key and put that into the game. So let's look at options. Speed, it has a violent setting. I've set my keybinds so I don't have to use the arrow keys. I got the ESDF. Scores. No one's played this. Info. Okay, so don't eat the stones. All right, let's start playing this snake horror simulator. Uh, I don't know which snake to go with. I think I'll go with the red and... That's not a snake noise, but okay. Alright. So this is 3D, which was a big thing at the time, having 3D on a computer. God, those... Scary, in the dark, demon things. Not demons, monsters. Then once you get long enough, this weird helicopter thing drops a key and you escape. But you have to go through this exit door that sounds like an EKG. So this level is a bit trickier. This is such a... Is the term morose? I guess I have a bit of nostalgia here, but it is still like... Horrifying. It's uh... I will figure out the word. Insidious? Yeah. Oh, there's a clock on the top. 
right. I assume if you don't finish within the clock, it will just kill you or something. So I played this game as a kid because um, back in the day, you could just download trials of video games and play them and see if they would work on your computer. Um, that sky is scaring me. Why is it dark in one side? I guess because it's afternoon. Where's the key? Okay, I hear the helicopter noises. Out we go. So this is just starting straight in the afternoon. It's yellow for some reason, I'm not sure. It's getting the weird color effect you would if like you don't have the cables connected to your TV properly. But that's like not happening here. I don't have anything set up like that. What happens if you bump into the tree stump? Let's see. The snake does not like it. Um, and if you eat a rock, the snake also does not like it. It makes a coughing noise. Which is fair. I have it. oh. Those eyes, I don't like them. Level 5. I don't remember what level I stopped playing at as a kid. The 3D games were super cool. Um, a lot of the 3D, including this 3D I think, was done without a graphics card. Um, this might be doing it using a graphics card. Lots of games back then had options for different, like, are you going to use a graphics card or not? Um, and if not, it just looks kind of trashy, but it works. Nowadays, you, well, most computers have a graphics card, so it's fine. But I remember playing like a 3D game that required a graphics card and not quite understanding why it didn't work on some computers because it just crashed at the start and I was like, I don't understand. Oh no, this snake might be too long. Where's the music going? No, I don't like that. Game complete. Alright. So that was the stroll level set. And there's the thickest. I have to register to play those, so I might do that. Oh, this camera, I don't like this. I don't like not being able to see everything around me. This is unsettling. And I don't like the mouth of the snake just being open like that.
This, oh, this camera's a bit better. He's not burp snake. Please give me the key. The key. Oh no. So another thing with this game is that if you bite the tail, the tail just comes off. Oh no, I am... Okay, I'm fine. So like, if I do this... I think that might lower the score. I'm not too sure. So this area is more round than anything. If you don't get the right angle, like the food will just pop. I don't quite get why. I guess it's punishment for not being precise enough. Don't be punished like that. I guess now I'm just gonna have to play it careful and just fill enough space as possible. Which is a bit annoying because I can't see what I'm doing. Like, I'm gonna have to remember where I've been. Which is kind of a cool take. There's the key. Oh no, 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 no. Not this. Ugh. Okay. Hey, Kaz. Oh, I bit my tail off. Twice. It's a snake game. I played this as a kid. Does this explain anything? It's not like deadly premonition. Okay. That was pointless, but you can turn really tightly. So, if you were ever bored of Snake and you thought maybe Snake could be a little more scary, then I think this is the game for you. It's also 3D. You would play this? That's good. Alright, I've got the key here. Let's exit this. Out the EKG door. Oh, it must be thunder or something, and that's why the sky and environment lights are flickering. Oh, nearly got me there, monster. Uh-oh. 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 Okay, I'm biting the tail. I'm not going near the monster. Not to give seizures to kids? I don't think so. Oh, it's got a percentage in the bottom left. Okay, I have completed the game. The trial version. 
So here's a question. Should I buy the full version and register it? Because I get a ton more levels. No? Well, I don't know. Let's put the speed up a bit. I can buy this game still. Um, let's try and just do this level again with a different snake. Just with a bit more speed. I'm not sure if that means the character is faster or the game clock is, oh, it means the character is faster, but I would assume the game clock would be faster too. Okay, where's the key? Are you confused about how this has a Twitch category? I might be one of the pro Axie Snake players if I'm just that good at this game. Around we go. No! <laughs> Okay. Um, did I mention I was a little bit scared when I used to play this game as a uh, six-year-old? There's a bit of anxiety in this game if you're not very good at it. I must admit there are six, yes, years old. Um, there are some punishments in the game that could imprint psychological harm on a child. Uh, you can turn them off in the options, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> playing this during 9-11, I wasn't six and... No, because 9-11 happened when I was in kindergarten. That's where I was when I heard the news. Um, I heard the news, I think, from my teacher. Um, she was telling me... Uh, this teacher was an old lady, um, probably not the most kind old lady to me. Um, anyway, so she told us that she heard on the radio in the morning that something bad happened and a lot of people died and I was like, I guess the thing is, as a kid, I had like the news of that happening all the time with things like the London terrorist attacks. I think there was the subway bombings. Um, and I was like, okay. Um, I didn't really care. Why would you tell that to children? I don't know, she's not even the parent. So I don't know if she was supposed to do that. Um, but uh, since I was a kid and I was an American, I was like, wow, that's just something that's happening. Like there were bombings in other places in the world all the time. Why would it not happen there? I don't understand. And then I just didn't care about it. And that's fine. I suppose if like Australia got 9-11, I don't know what you would 9-11 Australia over. I'm trying to... Would it be... Okay, if Australia was going to get, like, terrorist attacked, I'm sure there's been, like, scares and stuff, but I'm pretty sure it would be, like, the Sydney Opera House that gets it. Even though Sydney isn't the capital of Australia, everyone thinks it is. Soldiers were eating feet or something? What? Always hated that building? Yeah, the Sydney Opera House has a rich history of basically the government messing it up, kind of. Uh, they took the design and they had the architect of it. They're like, okay, it's time to make it. Um, so they started construction and the government was getting pissed at how long it was taking or something like that. 
and uh, the government put put them off the project. And I don't know, it's like they might have brought them back on, but it's a government thing, so it's you know they always, whenever they want to get rid of something, they just talk about money. Um, it's always like we can't afford this, even though you can afford other things. So, photo reveals Australia soldier drinking beer out of dead Taliban fighter's prosthetic leg. Yeah, um, like Australia is certainly a big friend of US. We're getting some nuclear subs because we've been good boys. Um, We've been good boys, so the UK and the US are giving us nuclear subs, so we can have some war later. We're running out of war now that, um, now that there's actually like problems in Afghanistan. I guess it's unfair to say that, but now that um, the US has put, ah. yeah, China basically, Afghanistan, <laughs> Afghanistan. Afghanistan um, doesn't need our help that much anymore now that the Taliban's over there taking care of them. Um, but China, China is big and scary. Um, so we've got to prepare for, for a war with China, which I'm pretty sure we would not win. So I don't know what, I don't know what the game plan there is. I feel like, I feel like if China wanted to go to war with us, we might probably lose not because um, like China has advanced military operations but all they really have to do is say like no electronics for you US and just stop exporting stuff like a trade war and that would probably just ruin the economies of everyone that isn't China uh oh what do I do here? Okay. I can just eat the tongue. Okay, problem time. The monsters actually come out of the shadows, so I don't like that around this time. Maybe we should have thought about that? Yeah, it's like, uh... I don't know. It's very disrespectful to China because it's got that big race hatred behind it. All right, uh, let's try and buy this game. So I'm actually just going to leave it on the wine desktop while I do this. Oh, we've got the, uh, we've got some advertising at the end. Um, and you can see that it has Axie Snake, Sky Maze and Air Zonix. So if we click more on Axie Snake, that does actually open up the game website. So I'm going to click register. Uh, I understand this doesn't look fun at all, um, but I'm going to be quick about this. You can actually pay using PayPal and that's fine. Like I'm okay with that. Um, so let's go register. Put in my email. Put in my real... Oh shit. Is that going to put my real name in... In the registration information? Hmm. Am I going to get doxxed just because I bought a video game? Because it might say registered to XXX or something. Let's just see. If it's not, I'll I'll just use a keygen or whatever. I don't care. Like if I buy the game, just it's fine. If I buy the game, it shouldn't matter which key I use to actually unlock it, right? Okay, I can download the product. And yeah, so, oh. It has, okay, so hang on a second. 
Um, the only person who's bought Axie Snake in 15 years. Well, he gave me a download link. So let's download that. And it gave me my key, which is kind of anonymized. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uninstall the current version of Axie Snake. Um, and then we'll install the one they sent me. This is version 1.19. So what we shall do is go to documents, downloads, Axie Snake. See what version this is, 1.19. So it's the same version. Um, I'll have to put my key information in a file. See how it says unregistered? So we're going to put, uh, I'm going to set up and make it like the proper video mode and stuff. Okay. Registration. User. Probably shouldn't show this on stream, right? Um, so give me a hot minute and I'll just be right back. All right. It registered successfully. User 69 eyes, yeah. So we've got full Axie Snake today, and that costs like 15 Australian dollars. Let's try and launch it if it's not already. I thought it was. Did I just launch two Axie Snakes? Yeah, see, it says licensee. No more Axe Screen. Is the Dollaroos real currency? I don't think so. Let's put the speed up a bit. Uh, fix the key binds. There we go. Now we've got all the levels. Let's start with thickest since obviously I played the first two of each set. So it's time to play for real. My dream has come true. Like, I know I'm gonna get laughed at for paying like $17 for this game, but here's the thing, okay? Half the other shareware games I'm gonna be playing, I can't actually buy anymore. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? Although maybe I can buy them, I'm not sure. I'm fairly sure I can't. We shall have to see. If I can buy them, I'll buy them. How influential was this game for you? Well, last night I had a dream about it. So, pretty influential. Oh shit, the timer. Okay, we gotta get out of here real fast. And yeah, there is audio crackling, but that's probably just because of wine. Okay, we've got to get in and do this. Oh, a power up. It didn't tell me what it did. Okay, well, not very helpful. Um, as a kid, when it showed me the end screen of the unregistered version, and it was like, this is the things you get, and it just had like power-ups and uh, butterflies and stuff, I was like, I want that. This is some pretty good music, not gonna lie. Um, yeah, so it's just interesting to me now to compare this to the state of PC video games. Oh no. Oh, haha. <laughs> nearly got me. Um, 
And mainly just the production quality, right? Things have gone really up high. This game is... If you ask someone to pay $17 for this game, you'd be like, are you kidding me? This is barely a proof of concept. This is like, this is what a kid could possibly uh, spin up. Um, and that's mainly because there's things like, I guess, full game engines now. Um, when I wanted to do game dev, um, it was before Unity and Unreal made the game engines just easy to, uh, you know, acquire and start with. Um, when I wanted to start developing video games, I had to, like, basically just start writing a game engine from scratch. Um, like, there were 3D graphics libraries, but all the logic, um, like, menus and um, characters and all that, you would have to program yourself. But, uh, you don't have to do that now, and that's not, like, a bad thing. Um, it's not a good thing either, it's like, it's just the way things were back then. Back in the day. Um, you would have to write the game engine for your game. I'm, st I'm only at 88% length. 92%. 93? So do the green apples give more? No? Okay. I need an extract, please. You need to be... You need to be able to write save systems, or you're not a real game dev. Oh no. This might be hell. Okay, we're gonna have to book it. Oh, okay. okay. No, 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 Okay. Things are getting a bit tight, not gonna lie. But yeah, it's, uh, it's good because I think the people who make video games probably shouldn't be the people who program them, like, um, you know, people who program things probably aren't that creative designers, which meant that, um, you know, you would get things like arcade games and, um, just a very kind of... I don't know, it could also be just resource limits and stuff at the time. I'm not entirely sure. But I know that um, by grouping like the requirements to make something, you always kind of create a... Uh, what's the word? There's that feedback effect where only people who program can make video games and they're just going to be video games by programmers. Um, and the culture that comes from programming and being able to program video games. Um, well now it seems like it's a lot easier, so you're going to have a wider variety of people. Um, let's get out of here, because I'm cutting it close. Um, the tools... <gasps> oh my god. There's monsters now. There's like little spiders that will grab the snake. Oh, I don't like this. What kind of games did I make? I didn't make any games. Um, um, probably like the root cause of that is that I just I don't like making games. I don't really like playing video games that much. Um, so obviously I'm not going to like have that creative drive, but I was more interested in the programming aspect of it, and I was like, well, you know, I might as well just, just cut the chase and just do regular programming instead, and, and now I'm just that kind of person that's like, oh, I'm going to try and program a you know, Twitch DOSBot, because I find that fun. 
Um, I find it fun to build, well every programmer kind of finds it fun, to build complex systems. Um, it's like playing dollhouse but automated. You have all your little you have all your little pipelines of data and transformations and sometimes you have objects and stuff that communicate back and forth. Okay, so the bees now move around. There are bees here. I don't like that. Wasps. I don't know, is that a wasp? That looks like a bee. Wasps have like, um, more body segments, don't they? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is cruel. This poor snake. I've never felt bad for a snake until this game. Um. Uh, what else is there to really talk about? I guess my Twitch DOSBot series, which is kind of on hold for now. Um, that will be coming back. Just, um, I was going to jokingly say after this whole COVID thing blows over, since I stopped it before COVID happened, like a few months before COVID hit. Okay, that, that got me. Um, but really, the, the reason why I haven't been doing Twitch DOSBot stuff is because it's like, uh, it's just, uh, my life is in ruins. Um, no, not really. Uh, it's just that I haven't really been... enjoying it so much. Um, the, the thing with it is that Duke's developing a cocaine addiction. No, um, so the thing with the plan behind the DOS bot is that it's like written as a 16-bit DOS application. And that's fine, that's cool, um, but it's like, it's never gonna run on real 16-bit networked hardware, is it? So, is there really a point for setting those limitations? And I guess that's that's just the core of. Let's get some more stuff. Ah, uh, these freaking bees. Um, that's the core of my objections to writing it that I have to go in my head. Yeah. So you ha you got to get a real. Oh god, my microphone is starting to clip a little bit. See, if I just talk really loud for a little bit, it clips. I don't know why. All right. So there's little spiders too. Um, yeah, it's like, I, I can run DOS on an actual machine, and that's fine. I have DOS running on my little laptop, remember I set that up on stream, and I have DOS running on this poor snake getting everything thrown at it. I have uh, a version of DOS, MS-DOS, running on... Well, I had it running on a, um, that gaming PC I'm using that had Windows 98 on it. Porting from DOSBox to DOS. Um, but the thing is, it's like, all the DOS machines you could possibly buy nowadays... Um, they're just... 32-bit. So why am I writing 16-bit code? What's the actual goal there? And without like an actual platform to build constraints for, it just seems not useless, but it seems arbitrary. Like if the platform is DOSBox, then I can just say, um, I'll use 32-bit DOSBox. If it's FreeDOS, I can say I'll use FreeDOS. Um, but right now it's just like, you know, is it ever going to run on real hardware? Um, 
Now, the thing is, is that it could possibly, um, if I actually did buy a DOS machine, but I'm not going to buy a DOS machine. Um, the reasoning is because DOS kind of sucked hard. Um, and I don't mean that in like a bad way that you shouldn't use DOS or that you shouldn't like DOS. Um, so the second daddy DOS, the second part of the complications with that series um, it's just the development cycle that I've had on it. Um, so originally I wanted to do all the development from DOS. I would write, you know, write text in it. And then I would write, I would compile it much like you would probably do in those days. Um, but the issue was it would keep crashing the computer. And so if this was a physical computer, I would have to like reboot. Oh shit. I got eight. You would have to reboot each time. And like, that would be a hassle. Um, and you know, that's, it's not bad, but it's like, if you think of um, developers who made games for DOS back in the day, um, you think of the game Doom, you're like, that's a DOS game, kind of. It's 32 bit, but it runs in DOS but it was actually built for, um, oh shit, shit, no, back, 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 please, 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 please do not eat, please do not eat, okay. Um, they were written on Unix computers. Um, Doom was written for Unix, well, not for, written on Unix computers. They had compilers and debuggers and all that. And, um, the official port of it was DOS, but all the tooling, the level editors, the development process was written on um, the next step machines running DOS and Objective C and stuff. And so you have this kind of idea of would I really develop a DOS bot on DOS? Would I, like, I guess contemporarily, yeah, but okay, you're thinking, well, if not that, then, oh shit, oh shit. Um, would you have two DOS computers? One for testing and one for development? Oh, I think we might be screwed. I think we might be thoroughly screwed. If we can just get to the exit before the monsters come out. Okay, we did it. And so it's just this kind of, this, this unease about the arbitrary restrictions that aren't solving any goals. Um, and another issue is like, okay, let's say I want to program it on DOS. Um, I would need a DOS machine. Um, okay, I have my EPC laptop. Um, I can't do video out on that because the VGA signal on it is... Ex these monsters, jeez. The VGA signal on it is not correct. It seems to be out of sync or something. To the point where if I plug in a VGA to HDMI adapter or something, um, in like my LCD screens that I have, um, it'll cut half the screen off, and then on the adapter, it'll kind of have the screen working properly unless there's lots of signal on the VJ thing. And this is because it's an analog signal, of course. Um, but let's say it, like DOS freezes. Rebooting takes like a while. Um, And so it just gets that feeling that, okay, so the DOS project is just there for bragging rights. Um, and that's fine. But is that enough to drive me to write? 
freaking DOS mod. I don't know. I mean, experimentally it's not because I'm not riding a DOS spot right now, am I? I'm playing Snake. Um, the other kind of justification that I could say, like in favor of the series is that um, a lot of the skills you learn with DOS programming are skills that apply to embedded programming in generally. Um, these freaking... Uh, I'm not angry. I just need to be more careful. I mean, I will, I will continue it. Don't, don't worry. It's going to happen. Um, but I'm just like, I don't know in what, in what state it will be continued. Um, because without hard and like rules and limits on what you can do, there's just no creativity is there. It's like, um, giving you infinite paint and an infinite canvas. You're like, where do I start? What's the goal here? When do I finish? Um, how did I mess this level up so bad? Probably by... Okay, we can get out of here. We can get out of here. We might not be able to get out of here. Where's the exit? No, it's the other way. No, the monster... Okay, we can do this. Oh no, the bee got me. I think... Why is my character going around in circles? I don't know. I guess that was something just weird happening. Maybe my key binding stuck. Um, and the other issue is that if I want to do something like resource limited or something, like a little DOS bot or whatever, a uh, little Twitch bot, I have like actual hardware I could do that on. That would probably be more fun. I mean, for me. Um, so, I don't know. But I did, like, end part 14 with um, the ability to buffer lines in and out. So, the bulk of the horrible, 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 horrible 14 parts of getting networking working is done. The networking is working. It is all working. I have ironed out the bugs. I went the extra length to do like multiple streams and months of development to get like networking to be easier in DOS. Um, so it could just be that it's like all up from here. It could just be that I, I've had some very bad experiences with um, just diving right into DOS networking development. And honestly, I, that's the kind of thing I enjoy doing, just diving in. DOS PTSD? No. Um, PTS DOS? This is an interesting looking level. Um, so, I'm not sure, it depends. It really just depends on, you know, what to think about it. Uh, it could be really fun. Uh, it's definitely worth trying to continue. So, the other, the other, like, objection here is that in order to do development for it, we're going to need, like, tracing the network or whatever in some cases um, and that requires me to like um, buy a VPN again to hide my actual IP address and location um, because unlike most peasants I actually I do 
use my home network from a static IP. So if someone finds that and like DOSes it, it's just gonna be a headache. I'd have to change my IP. I'd have to change all my DNS records. Um, I'd have to get firewall rules changed. Like it's not fun to do that. And with how, ma how much streaming I'm doing of like desktop stuff, every time I go to Google, that thing really wants to tell me my location. Like why? I know where I am. Why would you tell me that? How do I turn this off? Um, so it's really just, I don't know. Uh, it, it looks like I'm gonna have to get a VPN again. And so another issue is like, I'm probably going to need to set up a VM. Um, like if I'm gonna be showing files on the computer, I'm gonna need to hide my personal files and stuff. Um, and that's a, like, that's a headache to do. So a virtual machine with a VPN is like, at minimum, the requirement in order for me to have bearable development. So I don't know, and it's also the fact that there's a small audience. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I don't stream for the audience. I stream for me and as I guess. But I don't know, so that's just that's the state of the DOS stream. That's a lot of indecision. And again, in general, I have a lot of stuff to do in life. Um, I guess everyone does. Everyone has like an infinite list of things to do. Um, and priority wise, I don't know if DOS streaming is up there. I don't know if that's something that I value that highly. Um, I don't know. But also... You know, why not? A big thick dust. There's also the matter that if I wanted to like, uh, if I, when I start like um, streaming it again, it's going to have, I'm going to be uh, shoving it up on YouTube and it's gonna be weird to just like start from part 15. But it's going to have to be a kind of soft um, reboot, or not reboot, continuation, where I explain the premise and all that. Um, and so, you have this kind of conflict between me streaming just whatever, and me streaming dedicated projects that happen on stream. No one to 14 on YouTube, I'm not going to bother. They jump? I don't know, I haven't been paying that much attention to this game. Do, 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 do. Uh, see, the thing is, I'm not very smart with this game because if I go slow and I'm like, okay, I have to avoid certain enemies. It's like, I still want to eat the damn cherry or something, but there's enemies there. So it's like, well, I want the cherry though. Do you think there's a physical conduit? What, the, the snake? The game. Yeah.
I think I might be might be screwed with this. I was going too slow because I didn't want to get monstered. Oh, sh ah, no, we got this. We got this. We just got to wait for it to drop. Where are we dropping? There? You okay, all right. Well, boys. It's okay, this is the last level of this set. I played Fortnite. I thought of, I almost played Fortnite once. Um, any game that has like multiplayer microphone stuff, I'm so tempted to play. But also, when I have been playing a game that has multiplayer microphone, I've also wanted to just disable everyone else's microphone. Did I like my almost play? Um, not really, because the game just told me I didn't have a supported graphics card. I was like, okay. There was and two spiders there. That's not fair. Oh no, I've made a I have made a classic mistake. Oh dear. Is there a way to restart the level? No, I hit cancel. Okay. I didn't hit save either. We'll come back to that one if we have to. That was the 15th level. You've seen all the levels. It's fine. You like the floating words? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't have much to say else on the subject of doing more DOS streams. It's just like, um, I have a lot of projects that I should be working on that I'm not working on. And I don't know, but on the other hand, it's like me not working on a DOS, me working on DOS stream isn't going to take time away from me not working on other projects because I'm just not working on them regardless. Like, I don't want to use the logic that I could be doing something else instead, because that's never the case. Because usually the reason I'm not doing something isn't because I've prioritized it wrong, it's because, uh, I have some other life issue. Like, I don't know, being half asleep. I did buy, um... A, uh, a sleep mask today with earplugs. Uh, I bought it, I ordered it. Maybe it'll be here next week. That would be good. <laughs> Sleepy jukes? No, it's not sleepiness, it's just bad sleep. Um, my cat wants to go out, I think. Hang on a second. I don't understand why they put, like, return there. Rip cat. She's not dead. What's wrong with you? You also might notice that this stream is, like, at 60 FPS. If your computer can handle that. I don't know. I don't know if mine can. I'm not sure if I'll just like cut it down to 30 FPS, but this isn't like a screencast or anything. Um, video games seem to look really bad at 30 FPS. And, you know, for 2D games it could be fine. But for a 3D game like Axie Snake, it just really doesn't look good in 30. Although it would be like a more 
real experience. Um, I thought about playing this on like the actual Windows ME machine I have, but it would have really sucked. Um, I've decided I'm only using the ME machine to do like very old stuff that wine doesn't want to do. Like Action Man. I was going to spend a lot of time digging into Action Man to see why it doesn't work in wine. Um, I might do that still. But... I just honestly don't know if it's something I really want to do for the tenth time. Digging into Action Man's um, assembly code. And, I mean, I could stream doing that, possibly. How do you feel about England reverting to the Imperial system? Do you think it's the wrong move? Um, I'm going to assume that's a joke. Because if that's real, I'm going to just, like, die inside. And that gives my feelings on the issue. Like, for the record, I don't... I don't have a problem with Imperial measurements. All measurement systems are arbitrary. Um... It's fine. No, I gotta get the key. I gotta get the... Eat the key! Do I know what a foot is? Hell, I don't know what a meter is. Is my foot a foot? No. Um, I don't think so. It might be. Um, in Australia, um, they use feet for height measurement. Um, I think they do that in a lot of European countries too. Um, N for shoe sizing. Um, I'm not sure why. Like, measuring your height isn't... Like, unless you're ordering a coffin or a body bag, you don't really need to um, measure your height much, do you? I suppose for beds, beds are up there. Beds are like just temporary coffins, really, but without the top. Um, blankets can kind of be a top. Who knows? Why am I going towards the things that are going to slow me down? It's a bad idea. Okay, the helicopter is coming to pick us up. I, okay, we got it. This way. Yeah. If you get one of those sleeping bags, they're basically soft coffins. Uh, the thing with sleeping bags is they don't like have air. Ah, uh, sorry. What? I thought you said body bags. Um, sleeping bags have like holes for you to breathe right in. Okay, so that power up just puts the clock back. I like that. Um. I have a lot of shovelware I have to rip and put online. Um, about that uh, Dinosaur Planet game I played last stream, um, I did some research online. And this is just a rumour. I shouldn't say just a rumour because now you're like, thinking, oh no, did the guy who make it do something horrible? Um, is it like a CIA op or something to ruin kids' brains? Uh, it's nothing like that. Um, 
It's just that apparently on the YouTube video I found about it, there's a version of it that has 15 levels instead of just 5 levels. Now, I haven't been able to find like an official product documentation of this version of the game. Um, however, there were mentions that it, instead of being called Dinosaur um, Planet, no, Planet Dinosaur, um, it's called Jurassic Planet, uh, Jurassic Park or something. No, not Jurassic Park. I don't remember the name of it, but it had Jurassic in it. Um, and I looked that up. I looked up like reading and spelling Jurassic, oh, Jurassic World. So reading and spelling Jurassic World, apparently it exists in two libraries in Australia. So, could it be that it actually, you know, exists? We don't know. Um, I go on a shovelware hunt. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to a library, like a stave away, just to grab what might, might be a game and then rip it. Um, it is tempting, but at the same time, it's like I have so much uh, other shovelware stuff to go through. Go to our Australia and ask if they can. No. I don't want to do that. I'll just hang around the library dumpster and if they throw the game out, uh, I'll grab it then. This level seems to have like less spiders. Do they just not have spiders in some level? I didn't like fall asleep and start back at level one, did I? I don't know how to feel about this snake having like a cough. Can snakes cough? I don't think they can cough. Do snakes have vocal cords? I feel like the answer to that is absolutely not. Alright, so we're just going to get extraction. Okay, we're going in. Okay, we're going to carefully jump around. Okay, we got to book it. We got to... We did not book it. Okay, this is gonna sound like a really strange question, but do snakes have lungs? I feel like the answer is yes, because like all the skeletons of all the animals basically have the same kind of shape and like features and whatever. It's just that they like, they've morphed into what's adapted for their environment. But, assuming snakes have lungs, where are the lungs? Do they have noses to, well this one has a nose. Most snakes only have one lung? Really? 
I mean, that makes sense. But snakes as an animal have always... I don't know, so the thing with snakes in Australia is that you're told not to go near snakes ever. Snakes bad. If you see a snake, stand still, wait for it to leave. Don't make any vibrations at all. Um, but a kid brought his pet python to class and that was fine. So I've always understood like some snakes bad, some snakes good. But if you don't know the snake, you know, just be very, very careful. I'm not getting through this level, am I? Unless the exit's over here. It's not, it's on the other side. Oh my god, it's it's chasing me, it's chasing me, it's chasing me. They're getting come please, please, please. We got out. Asteroid strike. 66 million years ago led to diversification of snakes. That's pretty cool. I mean, whenever there's like any kind of gap in environment conditions, um, there's going to be like all kinds of weird stuff happening, isn't there? Like, I'm not a biologist, but it seems like... Um, like tomorrow if the bees went away um, there'd be trouble but then like bees version 2 would show up um, I don't know why I think that bees going away is an issue like I guess I watched the bees movie I know that uh, what's the word The, the word for, um, pesticide, yeah. I know pesticide's bad and is wrecking havoc, but that's not just bees, that's in all kinds of, um, uh, insects and animals. How do I feel about being in the last human generation? I'm not, though. I just ran into a monster there. Like... Humans are gonna be around for a few more. Maybe, I would guess, a, like, I don't know, millions of years? Like, the, the Duma mentality we have now isn't about humans disappearing, it's about the quality of life just disappearing. Um, like, right now things are pretty good. We have crops, we have different animals but uh, with the way things are going you know we're just probably gonna get into like maybe turn earth into a place where there's just um, only the animals that can survive the extreme circumstances uh, will be able to exist and that's not like necessarily a bad thing but it's gonna take a while to adapt much much longer than it takes to do the damage like cockroaches yeah I mean I assume birds and all that um, I assume the biggest factor and I'm just pulling this out of thin air is that it's just going to be not so much the like damage to the organisms like um i guess for fish and stuff like if you can't swim in hot water fish i'm sorry buddy but it would be something like uh just environments being destroyed uh rain forests sea habitats and that's going to cause extinction and humans seem pretty adaptable so we should be fine um, you know there's the there's the people like Elon Musk who think Mars is 
a solution or something. It's like, dude, you seen Mars? Like, with the amount of damage we could do to Earth, Mars is, uh, it's like, with the amount of damage we could do to Earth, Mars is still going to be an absolute trash tier. Like, it doesn't have oxygen. Like, global warming isn't going to destroy the oxygen. Like, buddy, that's like step one. There's water. Like, there's a lot of stuff here on Earth that just aren't going to be destroyed. There is going to be like freshwater walls and stuff, but it's not going to just. You know, we're not going, we're not starting with a barren rock and trying to build a system from there. We're going backwards. All right, this way. Um, do we have any other existential uh, problems? I guess I could just rant. Um, I've been annoyed at CGP Grey for like two years now, maybe more. Um, so maybe I should just rant about that a bit. That team is fine. He didn't do anything, he's just like... His takes, he, he makes good quality videos on YouTube with really strange takes. We're not cancelling him, don't... My stream number, you're the only person here in the stream, you can't... I don't have the ability to cancel anyone. So, I don't know what the issue is, but CGP Grey has like some really, he seems to be that whole tech libertarian stuff. I'm sure he has like half his savings in Bitcoin or some crap like that. Oh, come on. Come on, don't put the key there. All right. I know you love Bitcoin. So, what post it? Come on! I almost made that. I'll get back to bashing CGP Grey in a second though. Um, I just want to hear what you saw last night. Unless you're not going to share, unless that was the actual thing you were telling me. That might be the thing you're telling me, that you just saw a good post. Uh, I know we once saw that post where that, I think that, I don't know, middle class husband and wife bill maker combo when trying to put their money into Bitcoin or something and everyone was telling them no okay let me read this do I drop my two very young children savings into Bitcoin now and hand over the keys when they reach 18 18 year olds are almost as our slur as 17 year olds who aren't, met, who aren't much less our slur than 16 year olds, I suggest 25. Source the father of a 19 year old. I need to, I read that so badly. I need to, oh, I missed the key. I missed the key, I missed the key. Zero lives, there's a, okay. I need to pay attention. You distracted me. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go with brown snake. I'm not too sure. Honestly, I wouldn't 
be against this game having like some kind of a snake character creator. So the thing with CGP Grey is that he posts, uh, there's a few different videos. Um, one of my favorite videos to just, you know, fume over when I'm trying to fall asleep is his uh, end of death video where he's like, um, imagine there's a dragon. A dragon comes to a castle and starts feeding people and needs more and more people and people are like, we shouldn't get rid of the dragon. Um, because he's always been here and the dragon wants to eat stuff. And it's like, he's trying to analogize death by saying that death is preventable and we're not working on stopping death, therefore we're kind of accomplices to death. So like, by not by not dropping everything and trying to stop death from happen, uh, we are accomplices for death. And it's like, I don't know, dude. He had this idea that death is like medically curable. And it's like, well, I don't know about that, dude. I don't think you can cure death. I mean, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not a medician or whatever you want to call medicists, doctors. Um, but death, like aging, seems to be like an issue of corruption within the cells and bad uh, replication, right? Which is an analog process. So there's. There's always going to be some kind of mutation popping up in you. So uh, the only thing I can assume would make sense is if like you had copies of your cells taken and then every few years you just get all your cells replaced. I'm not too sure. Um, maybe there's medicine to do that. Hey Makoto. Um, but it's also like, okay, let's say we don't have death. Let's say we've solved death. What are we going to do with all the people? People aren't going to stop having kids and stuff. I got got. And it's like, okay, so people dying is kind of helpful to stop overpopulation if you think about it. No, this is not for DOS. This is for Windows 9 something. I'm running it in wine. But I just really dislike his analogy where he's like, if we don't do something about it, then we're, we're, we're causing death indirectly. We are guilty. We have, we have some blood on our hands for ignoring the problem as if we're like ignoring cancer or I guess he would probably make like a COVID analogy if he made it then. It reminds me of that like really silly argument about that basilisk, which is like, if you aren't building an AI, if you aren't putting everything in your life towards building an AI, um, then the AI, once it gets built, is going to torture you for not making it built faster. And that's like, bro. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Immortality auto automatically means genociding our children, unless you put them all in space. Which they do. People just die, bro. Another video he did was about, like, the problem of traffic. Oh, my cat wants to come back into my room. Come in. Uh, yeah, it's okay, buddy. Let me just check my messages. Uh, okay, we're going to go back to the game. K 
cats need cat doors everywhere. I've been thinking about getting it like a small animal dog door on my door. Um, my cat's big enough that she kind of needs a dog door. Like she's not fat, well she is fat, but she's like physically a big cat. Like you've seen my cat, I haven't like put a scale up next to her, but she's like, we have another cat and that cat's tiny in comparison. She's just, you know, physically large. It's like if you took a cat and then you just resized it in, in, in MS Paint to make the cat bigger. That's our cat. What's our other cat? That's my brother's cat. Yeah, my brother brought his cat um, when he moved back in. And so... Um, that cat is a cat. Uh, orange cat. Two whole cats. Well, this cat doesn't have an eye. I don't know if you can count that as a whole cat. And my cat has arthritis, so... It's not very good value for money. Um, are the cats friends? No. My cat is an old grandma type cat. Uh, and often just doesn't want the cat near them. Um, but the small cat, the new cat, um, is overly friendly with my cat. Um, and keeps trying to be friends, and it might slowly be working, I'm not sure. They've sat next to each other, but my cat just doesn't seem interested in hanging out with other cats. Um, she used to hang out with my first cat. Um, my first cat brought my current cat home one day, and so we adopted her because she was at her house and she wasn't chipped or anything and she was a kitten so it's just like well you brought home a cat and then they just like be cuddling all the time and stuff it was really nice um, and then that cat that's the cat that's in all my YouTube videos if you're wondering um, he really liked me and he got a little upset when I switched to an LCD monitor because he couldn't sit on the top and have all the nice warm uh, heat on him. Um. <laughs> so we had to put him to sleep because um, he had crystals uh, in his urinary tract and he was in extreme pain and it was the second time that happened and uh, we just had to make that decision and with our dog uh, who passed away a few years ago we had to euthanize him because um, he had diabetes and uh, it just got out of control I say got out of control um, like what we were supposed to control it like we did our best of like we giving your dog insulin every 12 hours is is difficult especially if you have things to do like sleep or whatever um but at the end it was like looking like okay so we're just gonna need to start feeding him like home cooked dog meals um just to get his like proper protein and diets and stuff so we were like preparing thinking okay so the vet gave us like a recipe like okay he has to have kangaroo meat and certain vegetables and we can only feed him this and that should help control his blood pressure uh, sorry blood sugar um, but he didn't yeah kangaroo meat meat from kangaroos um, and so, I'm, I'm all these spiders. 
And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, he didn't get better. Um, he didn't eat for like a week. Um, we didn't understand at the time that he was like, you know, near euthanization sick. So we took him to the vet and we're like, what next? And she's like, well, it could be time to euthanize him. They were like, oh shit, really? Um, of course in more emotional terms than that, uh, but yeah, so we euthanized him that same day. We talked about spending like the weekend with him, like, but uh, he just wasn't, you know, he was sick. He wasn't uh, enjoying his life. He was just laying down all the time and not eating. Um, so we decided to euthanize him uh, so he wouldn't be in that uh, pain and discomfort anymore. Like, um, I'm not diabetic, so I can't imagine what it's like to just have your blood sugar be a roller coaster. But I can't imagine it would have been, you know, fun, especially if you didn't want to eat. Like, that dog ate the same meal twice a day for like eight years um so yeah so that's like something that happens in life i'm not sad about it um like i know it's sad I don't feel too sad about it. That's just what happens in life. People and animals just pass away. Or they die, they get sick, whatever. Um, do I miss them? Not really. Like, I'm not gonna say, uh, what's the term? Uh, I don't, like, miss-miss them, though. Um, like, I'm not sitting here thinking, I wish my dog was here. Um, I guess that can be seen as heartless, but, like, that's just not what I feel. Um, that's not a decision I'm making saying, oh, I don't miss my dog. Like, I'm not choosing that. But, uh, that's just what it is. That's okay. I'm pretty sure if my dog was, I don't know, sentient and had human emotions, he'd be like, dude, don't stress yourself out. Also, I'm a dog. Chill. Um, but that would probably just be because that's my attitude that I'm projecting onto an animal. So yeah. That's, just, that's probably, that's actually probably even worse because I'm putting my words in the mouth of my dog. My deceased dog. Um, I don't know what he would actually say uh, or feel. Uh, probably something like, um, I'm, uh, he'd probably just be anxious. Yeah, barking, like, bark, bark, bark. There's something outside that I hear. And I'm like, okay, dog, but that's not how I really want to remember you, is it? I don't want to remember being stressed about you barking and having to let you in and out. I want to have this idealized image of all the good times without all the bad times. Uh, which is, like, not true. That's just not how things are. You know, people, are, people, anything is good and bad. And I think choosing to remember only the good parts of things is disrespectful, I guess. Um, it's certainly not legitimate. It's not, you're not remembering the actual thing. You're remembering half of the actual thing. Um, and that's why funerals kind of mess with me a bit. Because it's like, well, we have this we have this eulogy, and I understand it's a process of grief, but like, it's always... 
Ah, I got eaten. Um, but it, it is always remembering certain aspects of people and it's like, nah, when I die, I want people to remember how trashy I was and also how good I was because, I don't know, every time you look at any kind of uh, post, not post-mortem, biography of anyone, it's always flavoured a certain way. Um, which is based around the norms of our society. So like, uh, you know, eating apples is seen as a moral high ground. In my, in my eulogy, if I didn't like apples, it would be, he didn't like apples, but if he liked apples, he'd eat as many as possible. It's like, no, I didn't like apples. Don't. I don't know, I just feel like uh, having this this idea of just not remembering parts of reality selectively based on what you want to remember is, I don't know, not right, not nice. But then, I go, but then again, once I'm dead, I'm dead, so like all I am is memories. Um, so, well, yeah, remember me however you want, I don't care. <laughs> uh, remember the good parts of me, and then... That's fine. I don't care. It's your mind. Think of me how you want. Did dog and cat ever sleep together? Not really, no. My dog hated my cat hates cats to the point we had to petition our house into one half plus the outside for a dog um, other half plus um, a cat yard my aunt made for a cat so cat would never be in my room ever um, it was kind of distressing like I felt Kind of betrayal if anything like suddenly my cat lost a friend um, but you know just how things are jukes was cool but he never let me look at his feet i'm trying to think that seems true i don't think i've ever sent any feet pictures to anyone, ever. I don't think there's even photos of me without shoes on. So, I mean, I guess, like, I'd have to take photos of my feet and then send them to you, but also, um, oh wait, no, I do have photos of my feet. But like, it's a lot of effort to take photos and my feet would be cold because my feet are cold all the time and that's why I wear shoes and socks and stuff and uh, we gotta get extracted out of here. Alright, this way. Okay, we're back to level 10. I think I just hummed Sonic music instead of the actual song music. Showing your feet to someone declares that you are submissive to them. That makes sense. Um, like you're the person with a weird foot fetish, right? You would know about this. You're an expert. You're into like the feet culture. I think you're like admin of wiki feet. That site that's for like feet pics of random celebrities or people you just decide are celebrities. Kind of creeps me out just having photos. Jukes wiki feet? No. Like whatever. 
Let's see what wiki feed is. Oh, you're in for some fun, buddy. Um, the famous Twitch streamer jokes. Yeah, like, I don't have a problem with it. Um, but it's like... I know, it seems weird. If people get creeped out by you creeping on them, then you probably should creep on them less. Or at least not creep on them in public. Like, have the decency to creep on them in private. Oh, this is mouse controlled? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. I was gonna check my OBS audio levels. Wiki feed is kind of cringe. I don't know. Everything's cringe to someone. I don't think I want to make a judgment on whether something is cringe. Except CGP Grey, because let me tell you about his next video that just really jacks me the wrong way. So, he has this um, video... Oh, I just got killed. So he has this video about the problem of traffic, and he's like, a lot of traffic is caused by people slowing down to a halt if they see a car in front of them slowing down to a halt. So, for instance, if you see a car in front of you suddenly brake, then you're suddenly going to brake. And that's going to kind of propagate down, and in like cities and stuff, that'll just keep happening, even though there's no reason to brake. The original... I just got killed. Game over. Game over. Okay, we're gonna do this fast. We're gonna get through this rainforest. So yeah, his idea is that all this would be solved is if people when seeing someone else break, they don't break immediately, they just slow down. That way, it's, uh, if you think of it as like kind of a wave across traffic, um, the person behind you will slow down less and less because you're not taking the brake in front of you and replicating it with the same power. Therefore, uh, it's not going to just keep resonating down the chain with the same power, it's just going to um, be less and less. I mean, he didn't explain it that way. That's how I explained it, because it makes sense that way. Like, that's the only way you can explain it without his weird video graphics, I think. In the idea that you have this kind of um, propagation of some source, which is breaking. And if everyone breaks, and that's the same amount of breaking, but if someone breaks a little bit less each time, then it's just going to be gone. Like, it's not, it's not a one-to-one -one multiplier. Anyway, he was like, okay, how do, how do we get people to do that? And I'm thinking in my head, uh, we train people. Um, maybe all the people on the road should get thorough training, dash cams. Um, they shouldn't be allowed to brake check people. Um, but his solution was like self-driving cars and I'm like, okay, that makes sense And so he shows like an animation of how self-driving cars can all like sh Explain their position to each other So they don't have to like break unless necessary So like if you're coming to a crossroad and you're like there's no cars within like a block. You can just keep speeding through the crossroad and things like that. Basically the cars would just all talk to each other and in like really fast times just say, I'm here, I'm here, and then build like paths through traffic at full speed. And it's like, that makes sense. But also, it doesn't seem pretty safe, does it? Like what if a car locks up? What if the computer on it is like, well, I think the path, like I haven't heard from another car. Does that mean that the car isn't there? Um, 
what if someone's taken manual control of the car? Which I guess isn't really a thing in this model. Um, but possibly the best rebuttal I heard was doing someone, I think someone on YouTube was like, this is a hellscape because there's no space for pedestrians. And I'm like, yeah, actually, that makes sense. You've, you've taken a dual use feature for cars and bikes and people, um, and you've just turned it into self-driving car path. Well, that's kind of trash. His other video is about how automation will solve everything. Um, well not solve everything, but it'll replace everybody's jobs. Um, and how every task can be automated. And it's like, like in theory, sure. Um, you only need, like for a task you need to be as good as a human. Uh, but the main issue I have with automation is the amount of training. Um, it takes so much to train a computer to do something. And then even then, like, it will only, like, it will do it only based on pattern matching instead of, like, logical purposes and stuff. Um, because all AI is just pattern matching at this point, or something akin to that. Like they are. They have a set of inputs, like pixels of an image, and they're like, okay, I've seen these inputs before. This looks a bit like the inputs of a sheep. And that's about it. Um, And I'm just thinking, like, that's not how I want things to be done. I don't want the process of figuring out if a picture is a sheep to be like, do these pixels look like a sheep? Because that makes no sense. Like, that's two different um, levels of things. Like, you have the level of pixels, and then you have the levels of, like, things that are in the image, and then you have, like... Um, levels higher than that and I know like AI and neural nets support going through these levels um, but they don't explain it and you can't logically explain to the neural nets why they're wrong like if, if you go up to a human and they're like wow look at that sheep and you're like that's a goat look at the horns and they're like okay Goats look like sheep, but they don't have horns. You can't really do that to a neural net. You just have to like throw more pictures of goats at them and hope that they'll get it right. Well, not hope, but like test. And so it's like, you know, throw as much data as you can until you get the probability out that you want. Which means that it doesn't really do any predictive behavior since by definition, everything you're doing is going to be measured at the output. Um, I guess it is, it's not. I don't know if predictive is the word. What's a better word than predictive for that? Um, If you train a machine to identify certain things with certain inputs and then you test that it identifies certain inputs that it hasn't seen before and then like you measure how often it gets the answer right, that doesn't seem like it's going to hold up very well if you need to change things. You can't like addend things for logical tasks, which is what jobs are. Like, if you tell an AI to uh, make me a coffee and it makes you a coffee, you're like, okay, that's a good coffee. Make me a coffee um, with, like, less milk. And then the AI just starts stuttering and it just pours coffee into your cup. And then 
it has less milk, but it hasn't like replaced it with hot water or something like that. I don't know. I do remember that like, uh, not do remember. I remember when AI was the hype during the AI boom in the eighties. And now we're having a similar boom. Um, I'm just not really convinced given what I see that AI is going to replace jobs. What if you ask it to put some milk in your coffee? I don't know. And it puts a drop of milk in the coffee can? Yeah, um, it's like jobs are logical tasks. They're not guessing what things are. Like, I don't think planes use AI, do they? They probably use heuristics, but they probably, they probably do not use like neural networks and other stuff. Um, because at the end of the day, they're putting, they're putting this on a plane and if it breaks, they can't just go, oh, we trained it wrong. They have to figure out exactly why. No, I just ate a lot of my tail. What other videos did he do? He did a video about... He did a video about... Uh, colonization? No, not colonization, about like... Um, viruses and stuff, like how Americans came across to, not Americans, uh, Europeans came across to America and gave them viruses and stuff by accident. And he did this whole video and it's the summary was basically, uh, well, if it was the other way around, it would have happened too. Like Native Americans would have given Europeans viruses simply because there's a real life tech tree. And the reason why Native Americans didn't come over is because their tech tree sucks. They didn't have like horses or any European stuff. And it's just like, bro. Do you need horses to have a cool tech tree? I mean, I guess, I guess if your tech tree, I guess if your tech tree happens to align exactly with what the British people used, then yeah, the Native Americans wouldn't have had much of a tech tree. But also, it's not like inevitable that people are going to come across the sea and give you viruses, is it? Like, surely... Surely, Europeans at the time would be like, Hey, we probably shouldn't go to, like, across the sea in case they have viruses. Or did they just not understand that maybe they could go across the sea and get sick? And maybe if they thought really hard, they could be like, What if we have viruses that other people might not be immune to? What if we are the virus? What if we going across to another continent and stealing all their shit is virus-like behavior? That's something he didn't consider in his video. He also does a lot of videos about the monarchy and it's like, I don't know man. Monarchy seems kind of sus. Not a fan of that. But his like video was like, well the monarchy is good for um England, the UK, whatever he wants to call it. He said the, the monarchy is good because it brings like tourism and stuff. And it makes money back and it's like, well, like, maybe it is good, but should we still have it around? Like, it's 
sometimes things that are good in some ways are often bad in other ways. You do not think that the monarchy does that? Yeah, so... There's a lot of people that have rebutted the idea that the monarchy... Yeah, the castle and old buildings do, and the queen. People like the queen, people like the royal family, it's... It's like the Kardashians, but for, for the Commonwealth. And so... It's not, like, maybe they shouldn't have legal power over everything. Maybe they don't. I think it's over the military, maybe. Or maybe I'm wrong. I haven't been to Britland in a while. At all. I probably don't want to go there. There's not many countries I want to go to. Uh, I want to go to America someday. That'd be cool. Once it gets over this whole fascism thing. Alright, let me just quickly read what Kaz wrote without dying. I have an idea regarding the EU Copyright Act. There's no reason why visitors from the EU should suffer because of poor government choices. We are a large community with a common interest. Together we have the power to help our brothers from the EU get their daily dose of foot candy. I'm working on a new UE which will support a verified seal for each individual photo. Any photo that we can, can be cleared within its copyrights owner will be visible to EU countries. That's fair. I suppose because EU might have stronger copyright laws. Uh, I wasn't aware that EU copyright laws apply to people that aren't in the EU. Maybe they use like a CDN or something, like Cloudflare. Does Cloud, like, does, does the law apply to Cloudflare? Okay, we just gotta get to this exit and it'll be all good. They have wiki feet, man. That's good. The law only applies to peasants. This is true. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of wiki feet drama. Hang on a second. I have to check this OBS thing because I keep clipping really loudly. No, I'm pretty sure that's what I had it set to before. Uh, let me just put it down. Hello? Is this better? Is this better? What? Why was it clipping? This is... Uh, whatever. It's fine. No, the mouse. Okay, there we go. But yeah, I don't know. Of all the things to get mad at in the world, I'm probably not going to get mad at wiki feet. Unless, like, they're putting photos of people without their permission, which they probably are. Um, I suppose if they have a takedown system, that's fine, but you should also, like, have a notification system, too. Like, before you let people upload pictures of other people, you should probably require notifying them. I don't know, that makes sense to me. Maybe it's not practical. The random old man was on the front page. This random old man was on the front page who died in 2009. You don't like wiki feet? You're king shaming, but like... What? It sounds more like you're wiki, sh you're wiki shaming than, fi than kink shaming. What if it's like wiki... <laughs> wiki woman? This helicopter is not coming to extract me, is it? Please. Take me to wiki feet. Wiki feet, no! Maybe only look at the feet that were produced for the purpose of masturbation. 
yeah, I mean, okay, so that's an issue of consent. Um, in the same way of like the way that you don't, you wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to sit here and let you jack off to me. Um, it's also like, well, you're not sitting there. It's, it's different, but it's different in a way that I can't quite put my finger on. And I guess it's just a lot to do with how I feel about it. I certainly feel like objectifying any part of a person um, that the, and the person does not want that, you should not do that. Um, but then you also have things like you, people just can think about all this stuff. People can think about your feet. People can, you know, people can look at the original photos and think about it. Like you can't legally stop people from jacking it to photos of your feet. Uh, regardless of where they're hosted. So I don't know. It's it's more of a statement towards the community at Wikifeet saying I do not want the Wikifeet community to have pictures of me than it is just in general. You think about my feet all day but you don't know what your my feet actually look like? I mean, yeah, so that's a good example. Like, if you uploaded my feet, which I haven't sent you, and probably won't now that you've explained that, that tad bit of information there, if you uploaded that to Wikifeet, I would probably be a little bit upset. Unless people liked my feet. Um, in that case, I'd probably make more photos of feet. I don't know, it, d it depends on the, on the feedback. I want to get that power up. I don't know what that power up does. Um, you don't think about my feet? You sure? Why don't you? Is there something wrong with my feet? What are you saying about my feet? Would you not think about them all day? How are you gonna get out of this one, Kaz? How are you gonna solve your way out of this? You're gonna jam, aren't you? You're not massaging them right now, that's what's wrong with them. Okay, so that, that's a roller coaster. I don't know, it's also a lot of effort to think about people that are objectifying you. I mean I'm not a I'm not like experienced to that because I'm a man. Um So I don't have much experience in being objectified against my will. Do you think all Twitch streamers should have a feet cam? Do you think it should be standardized? Uh, that's a lot of effort. Where would the feet cam go in like my stream here? I'd have to move the chat a bit. I also don't really like, the thing is when you're doing fetish stuff, like body stuff, I don't, I feel kind of weird doing just like uh, a video of it. 
it'd be like, I'd have to say, okay, I'm an equal opportunist. I'm going to make like feet molds and feet casts so I can send people my physical feet and feel them if they don't have eyes. The Yamagoto. Like, if I'm going to do weird fetish shit, I better make sure that everyone can have access to weird fetish shit. <laughs> Go on. Also, move Acti Snake to make room for the feet cam? Absolutely not. What is wrong with you? I don't know what other weird fetishes there are, but I think there's like hot tub streams, but that's like an obvious thing in Twitch. There's also being a woman streamer, but that's not really like fetish shit. Is being a woman a fetish? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Being a woman is not a fetish. No. I don't think you can like... I don't think that's how it works. Like fetish is defined as stuff that you're like attracted to but isn't... I guess normal? I think, well, I guess under that definition, like being gay would have been a fetish or is a fetish, at least in some countries and cultures. But at the same time, would there be like, hmm, I don't think, I think, I don't think you can be phobic of a fetish, can you? Like fetishes are thought of as things that are a little strange but not particularly um, offensive everything is a fetish when you think about it I don't think so I think there's clear definitions oh we're at level 14 we're doing this I think give me that key Give me the key. Maxing the game. Alright, we're just gonna get to the exit and we will be off. What? What's up? You said, oh my god, what is that a reference to? What does this do? Hang on, does this give me score, life, food? No, it does nothing. Oh, I think bumping into something low is your thing. You reloaded wiki feet and they have Dwight from the office. Is that from that scene where he stands on the hot coals and burns his feet? Or is it from somewhere else? <laughs> Cause if they have feet of him like burning his feet off trying to impress, um, I don't know, is it Steve from the office? I'm not gonna click, oh it's for the actor. I mean, I guess that's, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I feel like being an actor is gonna just, being an actor is double like, not double, it's like, um, I don't know, I would hate to be an actor just because of the objectification that comes with it. And also because people use you as like their internet avatars when they're not you. And that part creeps me out a little bit. 
Although I guess it's of the char character. He isn't much to look at, but his feet are hot. So do they mean hot as in the hot coals? Or do they mean hot as in his feet are attractive? And a follow-up question, could is it possible? <laughs> Getting a Duke's Abbey? Yeah, you can get an avatar for me. As long as it's like a, a, a weird, gross avatar of me making a face. I'm not really photogenic at all. My face does not look good uh, on any type of camera or thing. Probably because my face isn't good at all. I don't know. This, this is how I feel about it. I understand that others are gonna feel different because it's subjective, but I think a lot of it is just to, just because I'm not used to looking at my face um, on camera because it's reversed. And so everything looks weirdly uncanny to me. My face looks completely different than I think it usually does. Um, which, going back to actors and stuff, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? Like, imagine every single movie you're in looking different to how you think you look. Because mirrors reverse what you look like. I still don't quite understand how mirrors reverse things. Like, it doesn't make sense why they reverse it one way. Level 16. Oh, this one had 20 levels, didn't it? I think. This is a bit nasty. We might not actually have enough time to get through all the Axie Snake levels. I'll try really hard though, um, but I'm mainly just streaming this because I feel like I'm preparing for the vaccine knocking me out for a day or two. What's some other boring and inconsequential stuff to talk? Yeah, I'm getting it in like... It's five now, so pro it's five... Seven hours? Like, it's gonna be at 12, so that's five minus 12. Six, 12 is two times six, so that's six. But then you add one because it's five and you're not minusing it. Where's the exit? Oh my god, don't tell me he was behind me. I heard it. Alright. Okay, well, we might not ever see the end of the rainforest level, but we will continue on and look at the distant camera levels. Um, let's try this pack of 15. This camera, I'm not too fond of. Are there any games you do like? Not really, no. Um... I've been playing RuneScape recently with you, but I'm only really enjoying that because, um, like, uh, you're there and it's very mindless. Um, I prefer watching people play video games because they're better at it. Um, and I just like watching reaction videos. I admit it, okay? 
I know, I know, I, I understand. I feel like there is a lot of stigma towards reaction videos and I know that they're like legally shaky ground since it's basically posting the original video and has some content that you know you probably would not think is fair use and hell it might not be. But I don't know, I like watching people react to things. They got that, they make facial expressions and it's enjoyable. Um, I don't know. It's enjoyable to watch people experience things or hear them experience things. Um, that's something that you can't like, uh, that's something that you can't recreate yourself because you've already experienced something a certain way or haven't experienced it that way and can't maybe. And so the only way to perhaps understand um, or experience some kind of effect of those um, again is to see someone else's reaction since that's also unexpected. You don't know how it's going to play out. So it's kind of a remix on the human experience itself, I guess. It's like a review, but very encapsulated. No, see, the thing that reaction videos bring to the table is not that they're a review, um, but they are uh, kind of like a live um, response to um, events in things. Let's grab this key and get out of here. Um, which is interesting because a lot of things that are built for a lot of content is built for certain emotional a lot of art is built for emotional provocative stuff especially comedy and stuff where the point isn't so much the actual overall content of it um, but the response provoked from someone and while it can it, like it can be a negative response it can be a positive response um, and I guess you could say that like the response is kind of pointless um, it's going to be repetitive it's not a unique thought but neither are reviews reviews aren't like really interesting are they um they just say the same thing someone explains that they like a film um someone else agrees that they like the film for that reason uh the only reviews i really like are the contrarian reviews where they're like you know what i have i i think that this film that is considered bad is actually good in a certain way and they have this appreciation of some angle of the film. These almost a devil's advocates um, ways of doing things. And it's like, one of my favorite films is Cat in the Hat 2003. And I guess to add on that list, Freddy Got Fingered. Um, are they good films? I don't know, they're fun. And they're definitely not deep or profound. Um, they don't lead you to think about your life or reflect on stuff. But Freddy Got Fingered certainly doesn't. But it acts on a different level of human consciousness, I think. Um, the experience level. Which is pretty important too. I'm sure there's like some art explanation of all this um, but I do like reaction videos for that reason um, also because they act as really good prompts to learn more about a person usually with reaction videos you watch ones that are by the same person um, and you learn more about that person you can see what the type of person is at least according to the camera um, it is of course edited and its own art in itself 
where if you make a reaction video, you're obviously going to, um, you know, select which reactions you think are good and think are bad. You can't just post a full thing. Um, but I think it's interesting, nevertheless, to look at reaction videos as yet another format or medium of ways to discuss and understand things. Um, it can often just be, I guess, a lot easier to understand what someone thinks of something when you see them react to it. You see their body language, you hear what they have to say in the moment. Um, I don't know, I'm making too much of an impassioned defense of reaction videos. Um, but they've become very popular during the COVID lockdown, where people have, you know, had to stay indoors. Um, the machine of producing content has slowed. Um, and they're very easy to make. You could think of them as like trash in a way. Um, you could think of them as trash, uh, low quality. Well, I would not say low quality because to make any kind of video requires an obscene amount of work. You have to get the lighting correct. You have to get the microphones correct. You have to um, edit it. You have to sync up audio and all kinds of stuff. It is. It is a hard job to just make any kind of content, um, which in a way you could say is a reason why they're not mindless on their own because they have effort put in. Um, although, I don't know, like I don't particularly like YouTuber reaction videos, but that's probably because I don't like YouTubers. Usually they don't like the things I like. Alright. You think it's because a lot of us aren't a part of mainstream society, so we take things differently? How do you feel about mukbang streams? I don't know. I don't... I haven't watched people eat stuff, and that's because I'm vegan, so... Um, basically all the vegan videos on the internet are... Uh, usually aimed around making things that are traditionally not vegan or vegan and then convincing you that it tastes as well as the real thing. Um, and then uh, it's like what what food are you going to eat on your vegan mukbang? Um, you can't do any kind of product placement. Um, do mukbangs happen with home cooked meals? I thought the I thought one of the guilty pleasures of mukbangs is simply to uh, see what it's like to eat something that you can't eat. Um, I mean, I guess if you're vegan, you could you could in a way justify mukbangs. You could like say, oh, I, I watch them because I don't eat animal products and yet the videos they're made um, and I'm not harming an animal just by watching a copy of the video and things like that and that's fine I know there's an argument about popularity and capitalism and stuff which is what vegans are fundamentally um, against when you get to it uh, on one axis of it but like just a random person eating meals that they're gonna eat anyway. Like, it's fine. Um, yeah, there's not that many vegan cooking shows. And when they are, they're, they're just not the type of food that I like. Um, since turning vegan, I've mostly been eating just 
I don't know, spaghetti and rice type food, pastas, um, just these foods that are fairly easy to buy that are vegan. Um, like, big carbs. Yeah, it's not on purpose. There's still like um, vegetables you can eat and all that. Um, but it's just, I'm, I'm not really enjoying, I don't really enjoy eating kind of solid vegetables and stuff. I just prefer having a bowl of something to eat. Um, I don't know why, but it just, it feels a lot nicer. I guess because this might be an autism thing, so you know, hold me back here, uh, but I find having a selection of different foods on a single plate, um, not negative or offensive or confusing or anything, but just, uh, I don't prefer it to just eating a bowl of spaghetti or something. Um, I guess it's because I don't know why. I'm sure someone could explain it. Um, it. Probably because it's more regular and expected. Like, um, if I'm eating spaghetti, it's just one thing, right? It's a uniform type of food when it comes mostly to texture. If you take a section of it and you eat it, then it's going to be fine for the rest of it for the most part. However, if you're like eating um, a baked meal, you can enjoy the potatoes, but not other parts. And that be can become stressful because you have to decide what to do with those. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how that goes. Um, but I, another part is that I just really like, I really like um, rice and pasta. So I don't know, I like fruit too, fruit's good. Um, I'm not sure what else there is to say on that subject, but it's a lot why, I don't know, I don't cook and cooking gives me anxiety looking at it because it seems like a complex process. It's hard to pick a recipe there's a lot of recipes for the same thing and there's no way to know if you're going to like the recipe. Uh, so it's a very anxious process, at least for someone that isn't cooking yet. And then there's also the problem that's like, okay, so I want to cook something. I'm going to cook something what am I going to cook? Because I could cook maybe anything. Um, and then there's the perspective of, you know, people with very low energy levels, uh, a bit like me. It's like, okay, I'm going to cook how often? Very often? Am I going to have that energy level when I like sometimes I can't even you know, stay awake for more than a few hours. I just got eaten. It's just um, a lot of anxiety and it's anxiety. Anxiety isn't like, um, it's not, I don't know how to explain what I'm thinking. Let me think for a second. Anxiety isn't a reasonable reason for me to not do something because it's usually a one-time thing. You can work through anxiety, but it's also not helpful in deciding to do something in the first place.
so I'm not saying I'm not going to cook because I don't have anxiety or that I have so much anxiety that I, I don't feel like I can cook. Um, I'm saying that the level of anxiety that I have from this is minimal, but it is still, um, well, anxiety. It's still there and it factors into how I feel about things and you know it might be a tiebreaker. Um, if I'm just tired I have sensory overload. Um, just the straw that breaks the camel's back might be uh, anxiety. It might also be other stuff like not having clean dishes or things like that. Um, the amount of prep you have to do. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not... It's not impossible. It's not like something that people don't do. Obviously, lots of people cook all the time and that's what they do. They, they cook every night. Like, it's not something that's impossible. Humans have done this. This is one of humanity's things, cooking. Um, but just for me, on a personal level, it seems uh, a bit high up on the pyramid of needs. Where did this helicopter drop this thing? It's over there, okay. It moves around, it bounces, I don't like that. I'm a big snake. I wonder why they wait till the snake's too big in order to give it the key. I wonder why the monsters wait for a time limit. You get tired with cooking too? Yeah. It could be a mental health thing. Like if you're spending your days handling everything else, then obviously you're not gonna have energy for cooking. Or like cleaning your room or dusting or stuff. And when you do have energy, you wanna do something that uh, is enjoyable. And so that's the story of my life and maybe procrastination. I'm not sure if that's what procrastination is. Um, I don't know, I, I get amazed at people who can, well, I'm not amazed, but I just, I don't understand people that can just do so many things like have daily routines um, be consistent and reliable to that point like I don't understand how to get to that level of energy let alone that level of uh, not energy uh, consistency But a lot of this is probably me talking from my current situation, uh, which is me being half asleep because my body wants to sleep in the daytime and it turns out sleeping in the daytime doesn't work very well. You should take a nap until it's time to leave. I mean, yeah, uh, I should probably shower. I haven't showered in a few days. Uh, I was going pretty good for a week or so. Um, regularly showering and shaving and uh, 
just hygiene stuff. Um, but the past few days, I just kind of uh, fell under the bus for some reason. I have a feeling it's because my sleep patterns want me to sleep in the day, and I'm just not getting enough sleep. So I don't have the energy to do these things. Um, but it's hard to tell because... Uh, it's hard to tell because you just can't really tell when you're tired, at least with the situation I have. You can tell you're you can tell you're sleepy. You can tell you can't do things, but it's you often second guess whether it's because you're getting bad sleep or you're tired or if you're just lazy or something. So even though I know that's not the case, um, often it's I guess preferable to think that I'm lazy because if I say that I'm lazy, then it's in my control a little bit compared to the idea of I'm not getting good sleep even though I'm trying really hard to get good sleep. And my body is just not giving me the energy I need. Um, and like, I get it. I, I, I get it. I'm a, I understand. I'm conscious of what's happening. I miss the key. Maybe not that conscious if I can't get a key in Axie Snake. Um, but I don't know. It's it's just one of those things. Um, have I tracked my hours? Yeah, I've tracked my hours. I might show them on stream. Yeah. Game complete. No, I'm not going to show my hours on stream, but lately they've been fairly inconsistent when it started to require me to sleep um, during the daytime. Although I'm not sure. I did it. Let's try and do these 20 levels. Go to bed. I mean, I will. I want to get. I want to do a three-hour stream. Like we'll be done in a little bit. Don't worry. This can be kind of like a good uh, visualization of tiredness versus performance, using Axie Snake as the subject. Not the subject, I'm the subject. Axie Snake is the task. Like, after an hour of lack of sleep, subject has been able to read chat and play Snake at the same time. The subject has shown no attempts to avoid in-game enemies or monsters, instead preferring to go through them and get attacked by them. We hypothesize that this is due to it being easier to simply go through painful stimuli than consider and recalculate other directions. Like thinking ahead has a big amount of cognitive um, overhead, doesn't it? So right now I'm not thinking ahead much I'm not thinking like if there's a gonna be a wasp around a mushroom or something I'm not thinking okay what other mushrooms are there around I have pretty high tunnel vision but as I said early in the stream I did order like a um, sleep mask and earplugs so hopefully I will be getting some good sleep uh, at least when they arrive um, that would be so good I remember when I um, 
I was keeping my sleep patterns uh, in to the um, you know regular 12-hour cycle that people have, um, and I was feeling so bad. I wasn't performing at all. Um, but as soon as I like let my body put itself back into how it wanted to sleep, it felt like I had like five cups of coffee waking up. Um, please give me the key. I might be able to get it. I might be able to get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Yes, lots of bugs. But I don't know, I've seen like, um, I know with alcoholism and other addictions, people think they're fine. They think they're performing um, fine, but everyone around them sees that they're not. And I feel like that's the situation I'm in a lot of time. And like just being aware of it doesn't change it, I don't think. I can't will myself to perform better. Um, it only makes me know the situation and, you know, take steps to rectify it, which in this case is get some sleep. Um, but in this case, I haven't, well, it would be a mistake to get sleep when I need it to because I'm having a vaccine at a certain time um, and that would interrupt sleep or um, I wouldn't be able to sleep at a certain time because, you know, if you have to get up in the middle of the night to go somewhere and get a vaccine, it's going to mess with you a bit. So a lot of what I deal with is just messing with, you know, how tired do you want to be? Is going somewhere to get, you know, going to the doctors or somewhere, is that going to be worth uh, having messed up sleep for another day or two. It's certainly not good. Um, it's also one reason where I, I, it's one reason I don't want to try and learn to drive and stuff. The snake burped. Is that rare? Did I just not notice that before? That came out of nowhere. Oh, borderline swastika here. Not a fan. How does anyone drive? Um, so I suspect that people can drive and... I don't know. I watch videos of like dash cams of people driving and try to predict when, what, like what car is going to cause the, the problem or accident and I can never do it. It's always a car that comes out of nowhere. But when I rewatch it, I can see the car clearly. So I'm not sure. It seems so stressful. And I know that once you learn to drive, it's quite easy. Um, because you get better at filtering out information. Um, you learn what, what's going to be problematic and what's not. At least I think that's what happens. Um, but I, I just worry that uh, people rag on you for not driving. It's like, believe me, I'm doing everyone a favor. Yeah, it's not because I, I think I'd be bad at driving. I just think I, uh, I'd be tempted to drive in situations where I shouldn't be driving and it's not illegal for me to do that. I don't think, I don't think it's like illegal to drive near your bedtime at noon. Um, but I think it would be a bad idea. And 
I guess it could be an arbitrary restriction. I haven't tried to drive. Um, but I've had situations where I've been walking the dog half asleep. Um, and, you know, because I walk on the road, because that's the only sensible thing to do. Um, I've had like cars come up behind me and they haven't hit me or anything, but it's just taken me a bit long to realize what was happening. You can't see and you can't focus. Yeah, you probably shouldn't drive. WTF to what? What's the problem here? What's up? Don't harass pedestrians. They didn't. I was walking on the road. Um, I don't remember what exactly happened. Um, but I was on the road and since I'm a pedestrian, I have a right of way, I think. Um, but, um, it was, you know, I didn't notice what was going on around me, which was the problem. I didn't have situational awareness. Um, when I walk the, when I walk the dog, I do the smart thing and I walk on the, um, opposite side of traffic, so traffic doesn't come up behind me and I see it coming onwards. Um, I don't remember what happened in this situation. I definitely would not walk, you know, with traffic coming up behind me. Um, but I think I was just startled enough by the fact that, you know, the car is there. I don't remember it being there that much. Um, I didn't hear it come up, come there. And it's close to me. Um, so I just walked on the footpath then I got killed. We can get through this. We might have to stay... Okay, can we actually go around the corner here? I don't think so. An American driver? What? I don't know, uh, sub to me on Twitch and I'll just start doing heroin and I'll just be awake for days. Don't, I, I, I wish, I know that people are going to be watching this on YouTube and I want to make it clear, I don't have like, I'm not a, ah, uh, look at this, I'm not good at being, um, no, I, I deliberately have chosen not to be a Twitch affiliate. Um, more like a leech on Twitch's servers. Um, <laughs> so you cannot sub to me. So when I say sub to me to do something, then that means it's not going to happen at all. New subscriber, Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro Nazi numbers. Okay. Um, What if it was like Ben Shapiro 1312? Would that be okay? Like radical Ben Shapiro leftist. Sub to me for HD ho toe cam. I almost said ho cam there. I don't like that. Oh, I am not doing this level right, am I? I need, I need to focus better. I need to draw from my pool of energy. I don't know why I did that. Okay. This pool of energy that I was going to use to, I don't know, brush my teeth later. I'm going to use it for Axie Snake. Here we go. Uh, I keep overshooting in this game. I'm not sure why. I think it's because you get punished if you aren't precise enough by the fruit popping and I just don't want to come, at, come in at the wrong angle. So yes. Would you let Axie Snake do this to your digestive system? 
I don't know, as a kid I watched a documentary of a dude that gave himself a tapeworm. Um, he pooped it out though for analysis. I'm not sure what the point of the documentary was. Oh no, I've made a mistake. Holy crap, I've failed. Would you become a mum to tapeworms? Probably not. I don't think, I'm not a fan of tapeworms. Like there's that house episode where that girl has a tapeworm. Um, and well, I take it out of her, but like, Okay, I think I know what's happening with Axie Snake. If I move close to a piece of fruit or something, the head moves towards it like that, but it's not where I'm actually pointing. So the head looks like it's sideways, like right now. So I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. It just, it's... I've really messed up this level. Yeah, we get killed. Poor snake. Game over? I don't know how to feel about this. Also, this menu is pretty like depressing. Look at this poor, lonely snake in a world where things want to eat it. Axie Snake. You know what? You like the holographic text? Yeah. Let's play a different game, just real quick. Um, let me find, I think it's in, where did I put all the games? Was it worth $15? Um, I don't care. I mean, probably not, no. Or it might have been. I don't know. I don't know how to attach value to games. How do you attach value to games? How does that work? Let me see if I can find this game. I don't know how to value games. Um, I guess based on playtime. All right, let's play Aliens 2K Gold. Um, hang on. Here we go. The text thing goes fast in wine because the frame rate is pretty fast. Oh, can we synchronize it with the V-blank interval? Maybe that'll help. Oh, it is not handling the menu properly. What if I turn off full screen? Well, let's start this. I'm not really doing it justice based on um, the menu text and effects going too fast. I know that wine um, didn't handle this game very well. Um, is that a good thing? I don't know. That was a weird eye. Okay, that gave me a score. Uh, wine did not handle this game very well until recently. Oh, 
What is that I? So now I do want to point out that this game actually, the music that it has is actually ripped from somewhere. Do, 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 do. What we might actually do... Um, no, quit please. Okay, hang on a second. Let's quickly unpack this game. Um, let me just find... Uh, the tool that I use, I think uni extract and Q on uh, uni extract would help. I found like a whole bunch of things to unpack games that are like bundled in a single executable. So let's try that on the aliens 2k thing. Please start. Why you no start? Open. I do not understand. What is the problem? Um, help. Uh, I think there was another program that I had as well that might have worked. Let's see if I can find it. Passwords.txt, it's empty. Um, I don't think I have any passwords in there. Um, I think I also dumped like QUnpack in there or something. Um, I think QUnpack might be what I'm using. A lot of these things are like really sketchy, um, these unpacker programs. Uh, they have no business being on my computer. Uh, I don't like that thumbnail. Okay. Let's open. Shit. That's not the right place. Okay, hang on a second. C drive. Program files. Aliens 2K Gold. And that's... Unpack, OEP is not correct. Get approximate, I guess. I don't know what an OEP is. Full unpack, unallocate. Okay, yeah, so you cannot allocate the driver memory. That's what the issue was with this. That doesn't sound good. Um, actually snake, uni extract. Why are you not working all of a sudden, uni extract? Okay, I'm just going to quickly uh, run it in a different wine thing. Um, it might be because it's a 64-bit application. So I'm just going to run it in a different uh, wine prefix. And I'll try and unpack it. So we're going to extract... My computer, oh no, it's not in my computer, is it? This is a different wine prefix. Um, I have so many files on my computer. Too many, perhaps. Okay, so we're going to go to projects. That. Assorted games. Done. Axi snake, view hidden files perhaps. No, wine, drive C. There's a ridiculously amount of nesting that I have. 
I think it's extracting. There are simply no included files to extract. Okay, so it can't be unpacked. I unpacked it once before. Um, and I don't understand how I did that. Why is past Yuki not writing stuff down? Um, but yeah, if I find it, I'll figure out how to extract this thing. All right, well, that's all the stream for today. Let's end. I don't know. With this. See you later.